Hello everybody! I am so sorry, but I managed to drop again the journal. So I'm going to have to, and I dropped it pretty much half an hour before the live, so I'm going to have to remake it so we can continue. <laughs> I'm so sorry, as I said, my hands are not the best thing. <laughs> Mm, so I thought of just continuing the um, steampunk one because I know that everybody was very um, excited about a steampunk journal. Uh, for the subscribers who haven't watched this, this is the um, I showed in the very first painting with polymer clay uh, thing how to make the back of it and we will just make the front of it with corners and everything and then I will probably show in a separate tutorial how to do the spine hi Zenta, hi Christy, hi Judy, hi Isabel, hi Donna hi Ellen, hi Sharon, bonjour Vero so first of all I'm going to prepare some black clay and um, if you did not join my Days Clayground uh, Facebook group, let me post the link real quick. Because I do make available each month a um, one of the sponsors only lives. And for this month is just the beginning of a mini series I had on steampunk. And the very beginning of it explains what is steampunk, what are the variations of the punk um, current, artistic current, and also, you know, that it, not everything is steampunk. Uh, and a lot of times it is erroneously called steampunk when it is not actually steampunk so we shall do the journal actual steampunk so if you have joined my group I'm going to place a link here on the in the chat uh, you can go ahead and watch the um, and all these former sponsor lives they are only made public for just the duration of the month after which I make them pub, uh, private again but uh, if you have already joined my group just uh, had and didn't watch the video yet go ahead and watch it so first of all I'm going to prepare myself some black clay real quick and I'm sorry but with the dropping thing I didn't have stuff ready for steampunk <laughs> unfortunately the good thing is that I did get my uh, pasta machine camera to work this time I just need to put some little felt things on my motor I'll show you what happened uh, so what happened my my initial motor burned out and the replacement motor was not really defective because it still works the problem is that it came of course with a rubber washer but apparently on this one the pins were not long enough so with the washer on i could get it in but i couldn't turn it so i had to remove the washer and i got some because uh, i had these kind of felt dots but they were way too thick so i had to order some thinner felt dots that came in uh, were delivered this morning and i have to put them in i didn't put them in yet so the motor is kind of wobbling but that's fine it doesn't come off so that's 
just fine. I can still work with it even if it is like this. Now, when we talk about the cover of a journal that you want to make steampunk style, uh, you need to pretty much decide if you want the background to be leather or if you want the background to be metal. And I will show you how to get a good leather effect texture by yourself. Let me get these through. And I'm going to get it one down so it would be long enough to get on the journal. I'm muting the microphone when I'm using the machine because it's very, very um, loud. It's louder than the old one. Okay, it's working. Yes, Ellen, I did mute the sound so because the this new motor is way louder than the old one and I didn't want to have it going. So I muted the microphone while I was working on the machine. What brand did you get, Ellen? Hi Colleen and Francis and Susan. So the same as for the other one, I'm going to do this real quick. Come on. So the same as I did with the other one, I am first basting the whole cover with bacon bond. Actually, I might need some more. Because you want it to be nice and enough of it that you wouldn't have areas that uh, I'm not going to scratch it for now I'm going to just leave it like this you can do it without scratching but it's going to have so much stuff on it that and it's also going to have corners so not a lot of chances of it coming off it's not going to be as thin as the landscape one okay now let me just place it here 
and remember that I'm going to have to cut it at the spine so I'm more interested in it in getting all the way to the edge so my main thing is not to trap air okay I'll have to look for it I never tried that ja, did you check for the fenders not to be plastic happy Sunday Marietta hi Elaine no I didn't turn on the text give me just a second there we go okay so remember first fold it gently over the edge Do I have it in the store? Because I know I added some cheaper machines. I know I added the Ovente because I heard from uh, several people that it's it does a good job, but I don't remember if the shoe. Just remember that I love using the hi Sonia I love using the cane bender from cane benders from uh, tiny Pandora because they work beautifully as smaller rollers so I'm first making sure that I don't have air trapped which is most likely at the edges so just pull the edges outwards okay. yeah I've been having some issues I think I said before that I am getting several times a year uh, steroid shots in my spine and then I also have a spot that's kind of like on the myofascial trigger point of the rhomboid muscle that's pretty much between the middle of the shoulder blade and the spine and uh, that's another spot where I get either steroid shots or Botox because when they remove the latissimus dorsi apparently there's a what's left over from a tendon from it and it misfires and it sends pain signals to my brain and it hurts and it just started happening sometimes the shot lasts two weeks sometimes it lasts six months the last one I had in September and it wore off sometime at the beginning of this past week so I have to schedule another shot okay good thank you for checking Judy
so place your blade perfectly flush with the inside of the cover and I'll say again I, I got these uh, little journals at the family dollar and they were I forgot if they were two dollars or three dollars hi Robbie and this one needs a little bit more attention and I remember for the best I don't know where she got them but I have this super long 8 inches uh, rigid blade that I got it's in tiny Pandora's set with the triangular long strips to make a full paper bead beads and it comes with that kit but it's one of the best thick rigid blades that I've seen it's super sharp and it's very rigid and it's long which is awesome thank you silver I'm trying not to touch this okay for the next step we have to decide if we want a metal or if we want a leather type thing and I will show you what in my opinion are the the best uh, things number one in order to obtain a good leather looking like don't use uh, the female leather at this point in the US is so hard to find it and it's a little bit too expensive just for this when you can obtain a leather look even without using the female leather sorry I've been rearranging my clay room and there's uh, stuff hi Chris that I'm not sure what I did with <laughs> okay not here just a minute I'll find them no worries I'll find them good spot that I don't find anymore oh, all right so your best bet to get a good um, leather look is to simply get some a uh, bacon bond bacon bend not bacon bond bacon bend or the new cost clay that's going to come up the new cost clay uh, they should be ship shipping and starting to sell in February but by what they are saying 
but uh, being so uh, elastic it's going to be just perfect for making your own textures and I'll show you how it looks like before starting to use it on here but what I do I simply get some uh, bacon bend clay and I go with it over my purses and leather jackets and stuff now hold on let me mute this to get through the machine sorry i've been working i've been talking and forgot about that so whenever you're doing the thank you so much ellen uh whenever you're doing the um, full leather you have to be very careful about what type of leather you're going to use as a general idea even if there are cheapo textures i don't know if they uh, susan if they sell it through amazon i will but if they don't i cannot add in my amazon store what i don't uh what is not on the amazon i can ask them to if they do affiliate i can ask them but uh, as i was saying even if there are cheapo fairly cheap textures for crocodile alligator snake skin uh, do not use those on any kind of project that you intend to stamp or to add a lot of embellishments because you do not put stamps and embellishments unless it's just a simple, classic, beautiful uh, thing. Don't tell me that you still don't have sound because now the microphone is not muted anymore. because okay there is sound um don't forget there there is up to 10 seconds of delay between what i'm doing and what you see i'm doing this so that the viewers can have the best experience without a lot of buffering so as i was saying uh, do not use a lot of embellishments. If you look at any of the, um, let's say, purses or jackets or whatever um, accessories or, you know, clothing out of uh, leather you see, you will see that anything that's already textured by nature does not have a lot of embellishments to start with you will never see stamped leather like that so go more towards uh less textured leather and as i said if you have if you go towards your purses your boots whatever and take the bake and bend uh this is from um a pigskin boot and it makes the best it doesn't look very deep it doesn't look like it's got a lot of uh, uh, 
texture on it, but it gives a perfect feeling of fake leather. And let me show you how it looks like. I just got it a little bit set in place. And it makes it look exactly like natural leather. So you don't have to worry much. Of course you can use regular uh, polymer clay, but it will not be very flexible. And as you can see, it looks exactly like leather. Now, if you want to use a metal type, what I suggest, give me just a second, let me grab my texture thing. Some of the best textures for metal background are the good old makings ones. And put this up here. And the way that I keep most of the makings, because I have one of those, uh, and I'll show you, it's a good way to keep your uh, textures. I went to Goodwill, and it's one of those old photo albums why I got it because it's theoretically it's for two photos but this is what you have to look at and I made, made sure that I can make it into just one because you have to make sure that um, or you can do it on fake leather it doesn't have to be real leather um, somebody please tell, tell Isa to reload the page. I know, Seamus. So you have to make sure that your textures would fit because some of those photo albums, the place for the photos is not big enough. But as you can see, it's perfect for the making textures. And that was one of my things I absolutely wanted to have a all the sets so this is one that works beautiful for metal because it looks like a series of rivets even if it is honeycombish and then you can even use the bricks one it still makes it look pretty metalish especially if you um, give it the mica powder treatment this one as well I, I even forgot how this is called it's a texture that looks almost like woven stuff but at the same time if you work it with mica powder or if you don't have mica powder metallic acrylic it will make it look like metal mesh and if you want i can show you each and every one of them then the tires truck tires uh, makes it look like metal then this one is exceptional for a metal look because it looks perfectly like some type of a uh, metal plate on a, on a box or on whatever. And this is what I'm going to be using. This one, even if it's also from the tires, this one doesn't uh, look as much as metal as the other tires one. Uh, another one that looks metallic. Hello Finnegan is this one because also it looks like some kind of metal plate decorated metal plate but this is pretty much it and as i said i would recommend you use the makings 
uh, I have there's a special place in my heart for the making textures because when I first started again to to do polymer clay and I uh, started the channel because I didn't have a lot of money I just had uh, money to buy the makings and I was super happy with them of course after that I had to try the other ones so what I'm going to do I'm going to do half of it not even half of it let's put the full leather right in the middle here because I intend to do a closer a closure and then I'll do the this one on the sides of it so always put the release agent on the clay not on the texture because in the texture it can get in the nooks and crannies and leave the raised parts without release agent on them yeah Finnegan is a little bit worrying me because he started meowing every time he goes to the bathroom so I might have to call the vet tomorrow morning I've been checking and it doesn't look like he's pooping soft or anything but I wonder if he doesn't have some UTI or something. Some kittens are like that. They just have to announce when they go. And considering his fixation with litter boxes. Okay, so we got the leather look. And let me pat it dry. And now I'm going to apply the metal look. And I'm not going to press it too hard. And as you notice, I'm not using the roller because I don't want to get a ghost image at this point the roller can displace either the clay or the texture itself and let's do the other one as well oops I need that You don't want to use too many elements. Uh, what I noticed is in a lot of the steampunk projects, um, people use too many elements and uh, the whole thing looks too crowded. Better make two or three projects if you have a lot of uh, embellishments and ideas. Better make two or three projects than make just one that is... Yes, I will. Thank you, Elaine. I'll go as soon as I remove this texture. Alrighty. I don't worry too much about the line between them because I'm going to put a, an embellishment. Give me just a minute. I'm going to get a pill and then bring a little bit Finnegan for your enjoyment.
Mama needs to trim his butt because he's getting a dirty butt all the time. And there you go. This is baby Finnegan. He my sweet baby. He's a sweet baby. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wash him. I got a... What do you want? Yeah, the only problem that I have now in the house is that whenever Win Whisper wants to go outside, hey, I have to catch Finnegan in order to be able to open the door. And I'm afraid Whisper wants outside, so just a second. I'm sorry. Thank you, Lydia. He is not big. He was just close to the camera. He only gained one pound in a month. So right now he's three pounds. He is not big at all. Now I have to wait for Whisper Twan to come back inside so I can let Finnegan out of the cage. Because normally I hold him. Okay, now the next step would be to give it some color. And if we are talking about leather, if you want to make your leather look a little bit worn out, generally it would be the the top part of the leather that gets slightly worn out and for this you will need to use either a dry rub of uh, acrylic paint or and i can tell you ahead of time that um, the acrylic is much easier to do than the um, powders with the powder, you have to be very, very, very careful. And let me grab water. And you do not want white. So, in order to do this, you don't want white. Uh, you want an off-white. Uh, there's uh, a color that's called Old Ivory. Or you can use, most of the time I use these. 
This one is called natural buff and the other one is called English lace. So if you are new and you haven't seen me explaining in you haven't seen watched enough of my tutorials in which I was doing a, an acrylic dry rub. The way that you do a dry rub, let's get the buff. Okay, he wants inside. He waddles when he walks. I don't put it past him having a little bit of, uh, I'm talking about Finnegan having a little bit of stomach discomfort because in the last two days I found him, uh, the big guys are fed on a dresser in my bedroom and I do that because of whisper because if Whisper eats anything else than what he's allowed to, he can go into liver failure within hours. So I'm trying to make sure that he cannot reach the cat food. And I found Finnegan a couple of times on the dresser. So, hi Victoria. So grab just plain acrylic, undiluted, put it on a piece of... Um, paper towel and it's called a dry rub because you have to have very little paint on your finger and I don't trust doing this with um, sponges or anything because you kind of need to feel and just go remember less is more if you want to get the proper effect You have to do very, very gentle pads. Has to be fairly. I don't know what's wrong with my hands, but everything is wrong. I think I'm just very tired, to be very honest. I've been fighting uh, some fibro flares. I th and I wasn't able to sleep well at night because of the pain. So I think that what I need to do, what I would need to do would be to just sleep. Do nothing else but sleep for a few days. Okay, so I did this. And I need to clean my finger. Oh, come on. And then I'm going to get some water. And this I've messed up. just gently rub it because what you want to obtain would be the look of worn leather so it has to be fairly wet and then very very gently with your finger rub on it Go, go. 
the egg. Hi, Sunny Lion. Welcome. And even if you don't have the time to go to all of them before they dry, make sure that they are not too dry. So keep them a little bit uh, wet until you get there. Because what you want, what will happen, the acrylic will have a little bit of a hard time drying. But when you start rubbing, whatever pieces have already, uh, tiny, tiny pieces have already uh, dried, they will start breaking off and they will look exactly like old leather. Not here. You know how the leather, when it's worn, it's going to have all kinds of like fibers in it that come off and I will show you a close-up so you can see better what I'm talking about so this is the first treatment to do and I used black because on black each and every uh, surface treatment you're going to do is going to look so much better of course you can use um, scrap clay but you'll have to work a little bit more for that now give it a minute to dry nicely And while that dries, let's apply a little bit of patina on the metal part. So, because I did pretty much a copperish on the back, I'm going to go with the same motif on the front. And this time I'm going to show you, because on the back I showed you how to do using the artisan powders that are a tad expensive because you have to get them color by color, even if you get a whole bunch in one box Hi. what are you doing So, the easy way and cheaper way. Finnegan, will you stop it? Now he's all running all over the place. And I think whoever said that he wants me to clean it was right. Because he keeps going in there and protesting that his litter box is not clean. Because he made a poop. But when I try to clean, whoever <laughs> saw the... I posted how he freaks out whenever I steal his poopies. So, I'm going to get the spring green perlex. And the first thing I'm going to do is to give it a all over in the metal area. And the same on this other side. In just a second, I need to take something.
cats. Someone had a hairball. <sighs> okay, so. I'm sorry, it's going to be a couple months, a little bit more pet related until Finnegan gets in line with the other cats because we still have a little bit of. He's stressing out Seamus a lot. Seamus is kind of scared of him. And Finnegan got the whole thing, so he's taking advantage of that and chases Finnegan, all, uh, Seamus all over the house. Okay, so after applying, and you have to make sure that you got enough mica powder in the recesses and don't put any over the so-called leather. So we're gonna do copper here. Grab a little bit of packing paper. Packing tape. Why did I say packing tape? <laughs> I don't know. And get the mica from the raised areas. Because you only want that green mica to be in the recesses. You don't want it to be on the raised areas. Why? Because I'm going to put some, if you remember, there was a tutorial called the Tri-Metal Pendant. Where I showed you how to do patina using mica powders and acrylic paints. And I explained there that the mica powder will act a little bit like a release agent for the acrylic wash so it will pretty much set there is still going to be plenty of mica powder on the raised areas but the acrylic wash will settle pretty much in the recesses That you want to get out, get off the most of the mica powder on the raised areas. Yes, Elaine, that's what I was trying to tell people that it takes a little bit longer because it's like bringing a toddler in the house of two elderly bachelors, even if the twins are not really elderly they're about like 45 years old in human terms so they are not really elderly okay for the next one use any kind of turquoise-ish paint it doesn't really matter which uh brand the cheapest brand a lot of times i would go to when I need to renew my stash, because as I don't use them, some colors do get um, dried out. I would just go to Walmart a couple times and just get whatever's under the one dollar, whatever's on sale. So you want something that would be turquoise-ish. If you want to get fancier, then look for the metallics, the dazzling metallics of Deco Art, and look for the Peacock Pearl. But this will work just fine you shouldn't have any problem with it and now I'm going to create a wash and your best bit so you don't have to mess up with all kinds of palettes and all kinds of stuff simply use the lid and then just go and on the side of the jar create a little bit of a colored wash so you have to have a very very liquidy color and just go with it over and as you can see it kind of goes in the recesses
and I'll do one side with the cheapo paint and the other side with the dazzling metallics paint. So once you placed your wash, very gently come back and pat dry whatever is on the top. Don't press. It's very important that you don't press on it. Just pat. It's okay if you get a little bit left on the tops. That's fine. Okay, now let me use the other one for this one. So I'm using now the Peacock Pearl. On this one I can make the wash in the because there wasn't a lot of color in the lid so I can make the wash directly in the lid. Don't press with the paintbrush. Just keep gently patting kind of like. And then the same like with the other one. We are going to pat the excess off. Now, while these two are drying up, I'm going to finish the worn out leather effect here with a brown. Now you can use raw sienna. I, I would advise you to use the burnt amber. But if you want to get this effect, definitely use the black clay on it. And I'm going to again do A wash of burnt amber. And the thing is that you won't really have to uh, seal anything because on this part you can either use one of the art alchemy waxes that don't need sealed or you can use perfect pearls and that one doesn't need to be sealed because it practically uh, bonds. So I'm going to use the burnt amber, traditional burnt amber. And as I said, I don't really have any preference to me on the regular acrylics. They are all pretty much the same. If you use deco art, if you use uh, Americana, what it doesn't, if you use apple barrel, they are all pretty much the same. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to again make a wash. and then get it in but it has to be a wash means in in painting terms a wash means uh, a very very diluted color in water but it has to be super diluted and a lot of times even when you're doing for example if you're using uh, acrylics to apply you know like on sculptures to make blush to make uh, to color the skin to give it a better uh, more realistic look it's better to apply several layers of washes instead of trying to apply one color too strong 
but on this effect it's very important that you use a very very diluted wash and I'm gonna repeat it so I can build up color because that's the mainly the thing with the washes you build up a layer of color onto something and you make it look more natural because you want it to have just a slight hue of brown as I said we are talking here not about brand new leather if you want brand new leather just apply the whatever texture you use and leave it like that but uh, if you want to make it look like some old stuff then you need to make it look like old stuff make sure that it went in all the little crevices No, I'm going to do, I honestly would use rather, I just don't want to get up again, uh, use just toilet paper. A lot of times you need to use toilet paper for some of these things. It's better than using um, paper towel. Don't press too hard because you don't want to remove a lot of the color. Just a little bit. Because as I said, you want it to look like worn out leather. And I think it needs one more little wash. Sorry. Not really dragon skin. The only thing that scares me about Finnegan having issues with his tummy is that like all kittens he has the tendency, especially his teething, has a tendency to munch on stuff. So I always have to be with my eyes on him where he is and what he's doing. Because believe me, it's something that happened to him because I didn't pay attention to him enough. I would be absolutely devastated. Okay, and I'm going to let it be just for a minute. I use a lot of paper towels. Good thing that I'm recycling. Okay, now, as you know, my camera doesn't always show exactly how something looks like, so I'm going to change the focus so you can see it better in close-up. Actually, let me turn off this big light because I'm always using the cold light it makes things a little bit more noticeable so 
can see this is pretty much and it's still shiny because it's still wet but this is pretty much how it looks like it looks like old worn out leather so let's get back now to the metal Yeah, and it's I mean, it's got such a he's so tiny, and I already have to wait more than a month to get him to get neutered because he's too small. And Zenta said if he grew, he's going getting big. No, it's just the he was close to the camera. Trust me, his his head is about this big under all that, so it's about. His head is about two inches in diameter and all that fur he's fairly small and his body is a little bit thicker than my wrists so i would say maybe seven and a half inches in circumference because i had to get him a little harness with the uh what you call it with a leash to take him to the vet and everything and i had to get a ferret harness to fit him because he's so tiny. Okay, now I'm going... Oops, I'm tripping on stuff. Uh, to give you a, a tip, if you want to imitate copper and stuff, uh, you don't always use the same color for antique copper as for newer copper. For the newer copper, to show you the, the difference, for newer copper from the perfect pearls, which you should always use instead of pearl X if you don't want to have... Uh, I have no idea. Somebody tell Fran to reload the page. Um, because you don't have to seal it. It will bond with the clay. But to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Let me grab. A I'm working on tutorials including. A and by the way, I'm working on. A Several tutorials for YouTube well, with all kinds of stuff, but one of them will be for the Witcher lovers, the Wolf Paw. That was, I think it was in the second episode in the beginning, but it's not done yet, so I still need to varnish it. So this would be new copper, it's perfect copper, the color. And this is how it looks like and I'll, I'll bring it in the light so you can see better but for older copper use the merriment red no it's not Mer is it merriment let me get my glass. yeah merriment red that's more reddish but it looks more like old copper And this is the difference. This is the new copper is a lot shinier. The old copper is more. And if you noticed, I did the same when I used the waxes on the back. Some of the, there's some wax that's more orangish and some wax that's more reddish. See? To show that it is an antique patinaed copper and we can do pretty much the same thing here so this is the merriment red perfect pearls and 
and it's not going to stick a lot to the clay because it's got the acrylic on top it will stick enough to do the oxidized copper look that I will always uh, recommend that you use the artisan powders because you can play with them better and the effect will be much nicer oh you saw that this is the end it's not the end it's been more than an hour but it's not the end um, I can still be on for a little while more And the thing is that this one, I dropped it several times already, but because I made it more bulkier, it didn't crack. The other one, I made it more delicate and it had some sculpted areas on, so. Remember I told you this is why I gave up on making, on sculpting art dolls because of my hands because I either I would get a twitch and I just throw the doll across the room and it breaks or I drop it and that's not a good thing So I'm going to apply all over the area the redder copper. Colleen, we just didn't start watching it. I've been on for, on for like one hour and 15 minutes almost. I know the time time goes by, doesn't it? So fast. And it's okay, don't don't make it even. You do not want to make it even. Unless you want to show a perfectly brand new copper of some sort, uh, don't make it look even. We want to make it look like oxidized stuff and it will not oxidize the same all over the place. And this one has quite a bit of red pigment in it. Huh. For my sponsors, about the live we had Friday. See what I'm talking about? <laughs> the difference between mica powder and mica pigment. Okay, and I'm going to give it just a few touches of the perfect copper of the newer one, the newer look, but just a few touches here and there. Not all over. Now, if you want to make it looking like bronze, let me give you an example about bronze. Use a sage green instead of a turquoise and mix it with a, a stronger green, not like winter green, but just a plain green green, darker green. Um, I, I would give you colors, but I don't know what you have around. So uh, you need a, uh, like a Christmas green and a sage green for the acrylic paint. And then you can easily use gold and bronze for the metal touch-ups. 
and try to put some on the very uh, we're gonna do corners so I'm not going to go in the corner on this one but think about when you open it because those areas will be the shiniest because they your ideally I mean if you think about it your um, fingers will remove the whatever uh, what you call it oxidization would be hi Anna hi Natalia so let's do the same thing for the bottom here so I'm going to apply a little bit more on the very edge here and then some on here too but you can use just one of the shades of copper but I definitely advise you to use two because it's going to make it look way more realistic if you use the two shades can you use three shades yeah you can use how many shades you want but use at least two Again, I'm going to insist a little bit on the edge here. Now, let me show you another tip that you want to, to do to make it look even better. Once you're done applying all the mica powder, using your finger, and I always use the middle finger, I'm not trying to flip you the bird, it's just that I have severe nerve damage in the tip of my index finger so I usually work with the middle finger because that's where I can feel so just go gently barely touching just go and gently burnish 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 it's going to make all your mica area be shiny of course you can do this with the art alchemy waxes but as I said I showed how to do the art alchemy. You can watch the first part of this mini series on how to use the art alchemy and the artisan powders. Here I'm showing a cheaper a version on how to obtain patina. So burnish, burnish, burnish. What I thought what I mean by burnishing is with the finger barely touching the clay, just keep going on in circle in, in a circular movement now let's do one more thing to this because I said I was going to show you all the ways and variants to do this I'm going to get some very cheapo uh, pastel And before I forget, if you want to use the artisan powders to make bronze, as I have used, if you remember, I used the Trianon Patina and the Mademoiselle something, I forgot what it was, 
for the greens and turquoises for the copper to do the uh, bronze use French sage and you can use a little bit of trianon patina with the French sage to do a good bronze so if you want to do this with artisan powders and you have the artisan powders use either the Orlean top or the vintage ivory but I'm going to just use some cheapo pastels and next Sunday we'll still be working on this because I have several uh, sponsor tutorials and some YouTube tutorials I'm working on and I want to finish them so uh, I won't have time to remake that uh, other journal right away so I'm grabbing some brown first it's a darker brown doesn't really matter what brand remember whenever you buy chalk pastels you always have to make sure that you get soft do not go for uh and be careful because most of the student quality ones they are not soft and the uh, chalk pastels that are not soft will not work as good so I'm placing first some brown a darker brown that would be the equivalent of a burnt umber pretty much and this is showing how to do it with chalk pastels consider that the area under it is pretty much black it's like i didn't do at all the acrylic part so you would put dark brown over the black make sure that it goes all the way in the recesses And then grab a little bit of packing tape and remove the excess leaving just the brown in the and then you will need some you will need some off white again don't use white it will not look good so i'm going to use okay job i'm going to use this and i hope i can do it because you've seen my hands are not the best thing and you want not to have any, uh, you know, stacked powder here. You want it to be just slightly over your fingers, kind of like this. And then start rubbing so that it will be only on the raised areas. Because when it comes to a real leather, only the raised areas will be worn out pretty much and again don't bother much about the junction areas because we are going to cover them with something
most of the leather used is, is why I'm using this whitish color is because most of the leather is uh, dyed so once it gets worn the color keeps rubbing off when it's fake leather you'll pretty much see the fabric underneath or whatever is uh, when we are talking pleather whatever is underneath the vinyl is put over but again it goes pretty much like this and as I said we are going to do the embellishments but now we are going to do that next Sunday and I'm going to put this in the oven let me change the focus so you can see it from close up and I'm going once again turn off the light so you can see better more natural light okay Now see how burnishing made this area look more metallic -y. and then on the leather full leather look of course you can use another leather look not necessarily the pig skin but to do this you can use as i said either the vintage ivory or the orlean top and get back to the normal thing so this is it to create a steampunk type and remember the you can do this the same with the more metallic -y thing the way that you want it but as i said these i'm doing in uh all the background will be in copper and then the embellishments will be in more bronzish and stuff and it will be steampunk not clockwork punk not cyberpunk not any other punk it will be steampunk and we will work on the embellishments next next sunday i hope you found this live with a lot of information useful information and thank you for being here with me have a wonderful sunday i love you all see you next sunday goodbye